this video we're going to cover how to repair a slipping clutch. Today we'll be working on a 1984 Honda 650 Nighthawk. We tuned this thing up and it really ripped and now the clutch slips when you get up about six or seven grand. So I'm going to show you how to repair a slipping clutch without spending a pile of money and you should be able to get another 10,000 miles on this clutch. Let's get started. And what we've done is leaned it way to the side so all the oil goes to one side of the engine so we don't have to drain the oil to get at the clutch. We've hung it from the rafters and what we'll do is we'll change the clutch, get it all working, run it and then change the oil. So let's get this thing apart. have the whole clutch pack apart. Take this over to the bench. This is what a clutch plate looks like when it's been slipping and it's been getting hot. You can kind of see some of the blue and stuff and it's just not grabbing. If you pull it like this you can just pull your fingers right through. But if you look at one of these where I've roughed it up a bit and you grab it all the blue ink's gone I've flattened it and if you pull it grabs way harder and that's what we're after and it'll make your clutch grip again let's take a closer look at the formula why this will work here's the basic friction formula force equals coefficient of friction times nominal pressure if you look at the illustration the big F is the sliding force, the N is the pressure of the clutch springs, and the coefficient of friction is based on the surfaces that are sliding together, how rough they are, and what they're made out of. So we're just going to take some fictitious numbers and put them in the formula and see what we get. We're going to say that we have a coefficient of friction of 0.02 and that our spring force is 100 pounds. And what we get is two pounds of sliding force. Now take a look at the coefficient of friction of 0.04 and that would represent that we roughed up the plates. You'll notice that the sliding force has gone up to four pounds. If we compare the two calculations we see we have a hundred percent increase in the sliding force which is what we're after. A couple of quick words of caution before you try this. This does not work very well with bikes that have aluminum clutch plates. Don't use rougher emery paper than 180. 220 has worked well for me over the years. You can use heavier springs, but that will cost you money and make your clutch lever a lot harder to pull in. Just going to take it. Get all the high spots and after you start to look at it and see where all the high spots are and basically what we're after is to take the glaze off the discs sometimes you'll find it easier to just take a small piece and just go like this to get the glaze off And now you can see that uh, all the glaze is gone. You pull on it, it's pretty grippy. Let's finish up the rest of these plates and get it back in the bike. We start by putting in a fiber plate. Now, if you look, you can just tell right away if, if everything's too worn out. If you just run your finger here, you can see if it's a big chunk, you can tell, hey, I got I need new cork plates, but in this case, I don't. When you put this thing together, if you look right there, there's a little punch mark, and on here is another little mark, and you want to make sure that these line up or your clutch won't work seen guys miss that put it together and it falls right down 
Put the springs back in. And before I put the final cover on, you want to grab the clutch lever and make sure this thing's functioning properly. And it seems to be. Now all we have to do is put the cover back on. And then we'll torque the screws by hand so you don't over tighten them or strip them. Bike back up. Ugh. Put it in Leave a comment below. Like it. Share it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.